Welcome to another video here and today what we're going to do is share with you eight tips to protecting yourself from identity theft. So stay tuned. All right, so identity theft is basically when someone is using your personal information like name, phone number, address, uh, birthday, social security number, insurance number, uh, that kind of stuff to be able to go ahead and open up new bank accounts or take your bank accounts, uh, take possession of them, open up new credit cards or take possession of those credit cards and be able to kind of use them. It's basically looking to commit some kind of fraud by pretending to be you. Now, if that's the case, uh, you know, there can be some serious issues with that because how do you know, banks and institutions know that you are you and it's not the other person around. So that's where the problem lies. So here are a few tips to help protect yourself. Again, these things are not foolproof. Uh, nothing is 100%. Even the big companies, Bank of America, Home Depot, they've got uh, a lot of records and data that's been stolen over the years. And there's many more companies out there um, that basically have had data breaches. So just understand that nothing's 100% foolproof. But if I just to give you a few tips, here are a few of them. Okay, so let's take a look. So tip number one is don't fall for phishing attempts. So never give out your private information to anyone on the phone, uh, email, social media, especially if you did not initiate the contact. Identity th thieves, they might try to contact you pretending to be from your bank, credit card company, or other institutions. They try to trick you into giving them your personal information like login credentials or credit card numbers. So if you don't know what phishing is, it's basically where they're trying to fish and extract data from you. They go ahead and call you, hey, this is your uh, bank calling, please provide us your uh, you know, tax ID and information so that way we can make sure that, hey, you deserve that credit. Or this is the IRS calling, uh, the, you know, the IRS scams where if you go ahead and we just want to verify that you are who you say you are, so give us your uh, you know, um, social security number and your current address and boom, 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 they're getting your information. So some people fall victim to that. It gets kind of annoying. There's a lot of calls that happen. Uh, there's also from auto insurance things, you name it. There's a lot of different things uh, and it's just different triggers, especially the way that it works and operates is if you were dealing with insurance, let's say this last week or something like that, and somebody calls you about insurance, you might think, hey, yeah, 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 I was just doing that. And that's where the phishing attempt starts to happen because in your mind you were dealing with this anyway and you think it might be the same person. So it's kind of like a uh, just an issue that you roll into because it's just happening at the same time that you were dealing with the same situation. All right, so here's tip number two. Be careful when selling your devices as well. This is another kind of thing that you want to be careful about because, you know, your devices carry a lot of stuff. So disposing of old computers, cell phones, or other devices, make sure you delete all that personal information that's stolen on them because as you can see, there's a lot of data in there, including like maps, locations, pictures, uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, most people, you know, if you're selling your devices, aren't going to go to those lengths and, um, you know, they're probably, I would say, on the good side, but there are people who purchase old devices and sometimes the data is not wiped clean and then you can get into some serious trouble if they are kind of the bad folks out there. Okay, let's look at number three and that is never lose sight of your credit card. Avoid credit card skimming by keeping an eye on your card at all times. If that's not possible, pay with cash. Now, I will tell you that even in, in my world where I'm aware of these things, uh, somebody stole my credit card, uh, skimming it uh, of some sort and you know I'm always keeping an eye on it and everything. But uh, just actually this last week, somebody tried to go to a convenience store. Um, my credit card company called me up, tried to make a 300 or so dollar purchase at a convenience store. I would assume they're buying lottery tickets. That's typically how the scams happen is they go out, you know, rather than taking, you know, a bunch of stuff from a convenience store or a store, it's just a lot easier to just buy a bunch of lottery tickets and then they try and scratch them off and, um, and then collect the cash afterwards. So anyways, uh, the transaction didn't go through, uh, but they knew that it wasn't me. So they put a hold on that because I never use that card for convenience stores. I basically pay with gash, uh, gas uh, at convenience stores. And that is the only thing that I purchased. So anyways, my point is, is, is that, you know, there are people out there that I'll try to skim your credit card. It's basically, they're just trying to attempt to extract that data from that credit card. And I don't know where this happened. Uh, it might have been when we bought things for the kids uh, at maybe um, one of the um, uh, stores and it might have gotten skimmed there or somebody extracted it somehow. But, you know, it by happenstance, 
it happened. So anyways, I'm cautious about it and uh, that card, we don't use it as often, but it can happen to just about anybody. So just be careful, be aware of these things, check your credit cards, uh, monitor those things. And if you can really be more specific on each credit card that you use, like let's say you got one for maybe like food and groceries and then another one for like gas and then another one for like uh, online purchases that you only leave at home, that's kind of really isolates things quite a bit and uh, makes it a lot better. So another great tip for you to kind of have. Okay, let's look at tip number four, and that is keep an eye on your credit report. So do an in-depth review of your credit report at least once a year to check for suspicious activity. If you do something, uh, find something unusual, just call your credit card company immediately. You can also use some credit protection services, which, uh, you know, alert you to when there are changes in your credit report. So this is definitely something that you should do. I know not everybody does it. It does cost time and money to be able to make it happen. And it's not something that even I'm on top of all the time, but uh, it's probably one of those things that I do like maybe once every five years instead of once every year. Uh, but it, it's just good to, as a peace of mind to check into those things. Okay, let's check out uh, number five and that is use strong passwords for your accounts. Make sure all your passwords are complex and different, create different passwords for all your accounts and never create a password that contains information related to your identity. Kind of like, you know, your birthday, your address, your last name, that kind of stuff any kind of things pertaining to that just kind of avoid that I personally use a program called KeePass so if you take a look at um, uh, KeePass it's, it's a good program you know there's also other programs like LastPass but I find KeePass is kind of uh, open source so if you check this out uh, KeePass is pretty good it allows you to store passwords um, and uh, kind of encrypt them and you can just kind of manage them right there the downside is it's not like universal across all devices but there is like LastPass, which is also pretty good. I use it for some basic uh, password management things and encryption. Uh, but a lot of times for like a lot of the other things, I use uh, KeePass for, you know, I still store credit cards in there and everything like that. And it's it's pretty intense. It's, it's I'd say, uh, works extremely well uh, for um, for basically protecting your your uh, your passwords, your files, information I put in the credit card numbers in there, uh, the codes, uh, all the details there. So um, it's it's quite good. Okay, let's look at number six, and that is enable the two factor authentication. It's basically an extra layer of security where um, you know in order for you to log into your account, there needs to be a secret code. A lot of times they use cell phones, but there's also some cool widgets and devices like a passcode. Uh, encryption card where it changes like every 30 seconds or so uh, and that could be also something that's physical that's on you so anything that's physical uh, something additional um, is just another layer of security so uh, you know you have the digital password that's good but then a physical device that's on you that's even better now sometimes that can even be bypassed but I'm just saying that anything you're taking it another step further if there is something that's physical that also needs to be uh, there for you to be able to access the account now yes it does make it a little bit more of a pain but it just adds an extra layer of security especially for the important things like maybe like banking maybe for like your investment accounts those kinds of things you might add the two layer uh, security and some additional uh, protections maybe for like basic things you wouldn't but uh, but for uh, those high secure or highly valuable things, you might want to add that extra little layer. Uh, keep your devices secured. So avoid connecting to public Wi-Fi networks since they may not be able to be secure. Keep your devices password protected at all times and install antivirus software in your computer. Make sure it's updated. So I will say that um, one cool thing about you know, uh, the modern world is you could go ahead and uh, if you buy uh, a phone, you could buy uh, one that's, you know, uh, expensive and you can use that on your day to day uh, life. But then the other one, you could also have a second device that basically is just kind of for connecting to the Internet or public Wi-Fi and just doing some basic searches. So I find this is kind of a, a lot better to just have a secondary device kind of I, I use one at home. And the one out and about, I it's pretty much on airplane mode all the time. So uh, my cell phone, I only turn it on kind of when needed as I'm out and about. Now, that's just a personal thing. Uh, got into it data saving years ago when when pretty much uh, data was expensive and you had to pay per, you know, per megabyte or so at the time. Uh, nowadays, the data is basically unlimited. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is, is that if you're able to go ahead and stay on airplane mode, stay kind of off connected off those public networks, I'd say that's kind of an extra layer of personal security. 
All right, here is number eight, and that is destroy documents before disposing. So dumpster diving is a way of stealing personal information that criminals still practice. So if you're planning to throw away like papers containing sensitive information, you know, receipts, loans, credit card applications, bank statements, that kind of stuff, make sure you shred them. Or me personally, I like to burn them, um, but that's just because I enjoy a nice fire. So anyways, those are a few tips for you for protecting yourself from some identity theft. Again, nothing is 100% foolproof, but... Take your time uh, to go ahead and just implement these things one step at a time, especially for the more sensitive things. And that way you can be a little bit more ahead uh, to just keeping things a little bit more, how shall we say it, protected. It's kind of like you'll never be foolproof, but um, just like the gazelles uh, versus the lions, you only have to be faster than the uh, as, a, as a gazelle, you only have to be faster than the other gazelles because the lion will eat the other people. So if you just make it more difficult, you'll probably won't be a, a victim because other people will be more of a victim than you are. So, uh, you know, even if you're not 100% foolproof, you might be at least more foolproof than others or more protected than other people. And that way, your account is just less penetratable. So um, anyways, so take a few initiative steps, protect yourself and, you know, check and monitor your uh, situation, credit reports, those kinds of things. So that way you can you know, stay protected and avoid fraud and a lot of headaches that go with it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.